everyone. This is three questions with John Cabral. Got it. I got it all, man. I got it all. You got it, you got it down, bro. You got it down. Hey, John, thanks for being on the podcast. And for those of you who don't know John, he is actually a superintendent in the Massachusetts area. How, how, I always have problems with this. Taunton? Am I saying uh, it right? You sound like you're from Taunton. Yes. Taunton. Yeah, yeah. Taunton. Like I remember they, 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 uh, a lot of your staff actually helped me to, to say that, you know, with a little accent story. And just so you know, like we're recording this uh, just after your Celtics lost, man. I'm really sorry. I know that that's a, a touchy subject, right? Isn't the Celtics lose and they basically fired yeah, everybody? Yeah, actually, that was one of the highlights of the first time you spoke with us. People were enjoying our back and forth about your Raptors and my Celtics. Yeah, I remember that. So so maybe that's why I had you on the podcast, this little you know payback for knocking out the Raptors and all Celtics. Anyways, John, thanks for being on the podcast. And uh, you, you know, you're know, you a superintendent now, and we've had such great conversations, and I've loved connecting with you and your staff. And just, you know, I know you're doing amazing things. So when you look back at your career, and you look back at, you know, all the incredible teachers that you work with, um, and maybe a teacher that you had, like, who is a teacher that sticks out to you and why? Yeah, Joe, I think of two teachers, uh, really, if I want to be honest. I think back in fourth grade, I had a teacher by the name of David Amaral. And what strikes me the most about David Amaral was uh, my family immigrated to the United States in 75. And Mr. Amaral was the first teacher who was Portuguese and could speak Portuguese and could relate with my parents and could relate to me. And uh, I remember Mr. Amaral took an interest in me uh, when he noticed that I liked to uh, do some architecture, do some home designs. And he would keep me in on recess. He would order pizza and we would sit at his desk because he was a contractor on the side and he would show me how to design homes uh, you know, as an architect. So I, I, I remember, but I also remember the connection, you know, having that Portuguese teacher that could connect with me and relate to my parents and understood the immigrant story you know, of coming to this country and wanting better for your kids. Uh, I knew I wanted, I knew at an early age, I wanted to do that for kids as well. And then my, the second person who really made me want to be a teacher was actually somebody who's a teacher now in the top public schools best man in my wedding, uh, one of my best friends, and I was the best man at, at his wedding, is a teacher by the name of Tommy Kurt, who's going to be retiring next year. I met Tom when I was in seventh grade back in 86. He was doing his student teaching at the Henry Lord Middle School in Fall River. And again, we just, we just connected. You know, when, you, when we talk about connecting with kids and getting to know your kids beyond the X's and O's, beyond the ABC's, you know, we could talk sports. Uh, we would, I would see him at the CYO because he was coaching down the CYO and then I got to play for him. I would see him in the Babe Ruth Baseball Leagues and he was one of my coaches and he was good friends with my coach. And so Tom was just somebody who you know, was there for me in middle school. He was there for me during difficult times in high school, helped me with the college process to write my essay, helped my parents who, again, don't speak English, don't write English, understand the financial aid piece. He even drove me out to college. Uh, oh, so that, yeah, and, and would show up at the airports to pick me up. I went to school in Illinois. So he drove me out to Illinois uh, with my buddy Vinny, helped get me settled there. And then with him and another good friend of mine who uh, you know, a servant leader, uh, Reverend Jay Maddock. Uh, again, just all about lifting and helping others, you know, giving that gift forward that they were very fortunate to receive. And um, I, I knock on wood that I'm blessed to be a superintendent, to be an educator mm -hmm. who can help kids and help families in similar backgrounds, but with similar backgrounds, you know, achieve their life dreams. And we just had a high school award ceremony, and that was part of my speech. Part of my speech was just reminding kids that you have a gift, you've been given many gifts throughout your education, you know, pay it forward and help lift others the way others right. have helped to lift you. And that, that, that to me, like when, when I was thinking, and we have, uh, we were talking before the podcast, we have a very similar story. My parents are obviously immigrants uh, too. And I think for part of my childhood, I was like, I remember I'm being embarrassed, you know, my parents would speak Greek and I'm like, don't do that, you know? And, and uh, I felt the teachers that, you know, made me proud of my heritage, right? And made me see that it was a really good thing. And that, that to me really resonated 
um, with me because you know you're you're I, we're in a new a different situation uh, and really to become proud of that and understand like that is you know one of the best things about what we do in education is is that those differences are to elevate are to make us better and and just you know amazing to have those stories and and you and uh is tom is tom in your district right now is he's in your so, district? yeah what, what's funny was um so he, when you're I, his I, boss now like that's what I'm happens his, i'm his boss everyone thinks i'm older than tom but yeah uh, i'm yeah. his boss now so tom okay. uh, this was in fall river so tom ended up getting a job in taunton yeah. Um, I came back from college. I was working in Fall River and I yeah. applied in Clinton and we were teachers together. Tom has always remained in the classroom. Yeah. I've, I've encouraged him many, many times to get into administration because he, he is just an amazing teacher and he's an amazing individual. Yeah. And, and, and proves how you can lead from any position in education, right? And be such an influence. So I'm going to give them David and Tom a big shout out. <laughs> Anyways, so. Don't forget Jay Maddock. <laughs> oh, and Jay Maddock. Yeah. So, hey, now, so speaking of administrators, right? And specifically because uh, the reason I use the terminology administrators, and you just really highlighted this, is that when I say leaders, I actually, that could be any position, but administrators specifically, when you think about the administrators you had, you know, maybe as a kid, the you know, ones that you work with right now, like who is one that stuck out to you and why? Yeah, I mean, that, that's a great question. And uh, Ray O'Malley, he was, so when I was teaching at Parker Middle School here in Taunton, uh, I had been in the classroom for about a year and a half. And then uh, Ray O'Malley was the new principal at the Parker Middle School. And he saw something. Uh, he saw something and either he saw something or he didn't feel like doing his own MCAS, which is our stakes test. He didn't feel like doing his MCAS analysis. So Ray, Ray started giving me little projects on the side. And I really enjoyed analyzing the data and showing Ray the trends. Uh, yeah early on. And so Ray started giving me assignments, starting putting me in positions and really started coaching me up uh, to think about becoming an administrator. So I, I got to give Ray all the credit in the world. And I also want to say, as far as learning to be a leader, how to be a servant leader, uh, I would say Jay Maddock. Uh, I was working at the Fall River CYO, uh, covering the front desk, opening up on Saturdays, locking up on Saturdays and Sundays uh, while I was still in high school. I want to say like a senior or junior in high school. So at a very young age, uh, Jay Maddox saw some potential in me to be able to lead and so that I, I, I must be responsible because he trusted me with that building uh, and, and all the gate receipts. Uh, so I think those two were the ones who really pushed me towards being leaders. But as far as being a leader in education, Ray O'Malley was the one who um, really coached me up and put me on that path toward being a, 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 a school administrator. And the, the thing that I appreciate and I, you know, in my work with you is a lot of people, cause I talk about how much I hate the terminology data driven. Cause I think a lot of times, um, we can get lost in numbers and we can lose our kids. And I think that what I say to people is I have no issue with data. I, I prefer the term evidence to be honest with you, but those things are important to serve your kids. That's you're driven by your students. And I think, you know, uh, from your work of how you focus on elevation, how you focus on relationships, and that's a, that's a component of it to serve those things, not the other way around. And I think a lot of times we get lost in that. So, uh, just incredible is, is Ray, it's Ray O'Malley. Where is he today? Ray's retired in a funny story. Ray O'Malley actually played for the Boston Bruins. So you I, was, I actually recognized the name when you said that, and I thought, there's no way. Yeah, he had a cup of coffee with the Bruins back in the, I want to say, early to mid-70s. Phil Esposito, he's actually in the book, Aura on Ice. There's a, really? If you look up the book, Aura on Ice, there's a page where Bobby Orr is checking or showing how to check somebody up against the yeah. chicken wire, and it's, and it's, it's Ray and O'Malley. It's Ray O'Malley. I love it. All right. Yeah. Hey, hey, the who are the Bruins? The Bruins are in the playoffs right now, are they not? I think they are. We play tonight. Very excited. Yeah, but they're playing the Islanders. That's my team. Did you so, know yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, George, but um, yeah, we're <laughs> the, the the perfection line is going to show up. And, we'll and, uh, we'll I, I apologize. You're going to be down two to one tonight, George. We'll see. We'll see. Well, and this is recorded, so we'll we'll see who was right. You know, uh, by the time this is actually released. So the last I'll, question. I'll text so, you tonight. Okay. Yeah. The, the, the last, the last question, um, is, you know, I I've had great conversations with you. I've met so many of your wonderful staff, uh, many of your, your school board, 
And I know that, you know, this year has been challenging, obviously, right? And I'm sure you've learned a lot. But if you look back, like we've all like, I, I kind of think that we've all like we've all become first year teachers this year, whether we like it or not, right? So when you look actually back at your actual first year of teaching, right? And you've had great stories of mentorship already. What advice would you actually give to yourself? Like what advice would you say like, hey, you know, sit yourself down and, you know, maybe focus on this. Like what would you say to yourself in your first year of teaching? Just to remember patience and it's not a race and that you got to give yourself time. You got to give yourself time. I've always been one to think, and somebody gave me this advice when I was doing, I was my cooperating teacher, Bruce Fershaw out in Oswego, Illinois. He told me three years, John, three years. Year one is survival. Year two, you start to get a handle and you start to get a, a you know, confidence in the content and in yourself. And year three is when you really should be coming into your own as, a, as an educator. So it's really about giving yourself patience and also making sure that you have the supports in place. So when you are looking to get into a school system, you know, that's something that you want to, one of the questions you want to know is what kind of support am I going to have to right. be able to grow and learn as a professional? Yeah. And I, I, I appreciate that you say that as a superintendent, because I think a lot of times, you know, teachers, like I, I had worked in two school districts and back to back. And the reason I pick up, and I've actually worked in more, but there's two in particular I worked in. Um, the the one prior to this, the last one I worked in, uh, I had not met the superintendent in five years I was there. And in my second school district, which was larger, I met the superintendent before I even started on my first day. And we actually met all of our um, we met all of the central office staff. They said like, Hey, here's what we do. Here's how we support you. Uh, here's the things that we knew. And I made those connections immediately and it was just a very different tone. And now I know like, you know, district leadership changes and, you know, I'm not saying that school district still does th those same things, but that, that is a lot of times that if we want people to be successful, we have to be there to be supportive. And so when I, um, have connected with your staff and I've connected and just kind of how highly they speak of you and the work that I see you doing. I know that you don't just say that, but you actually, you know, bring that to fruition. So I know a lot of people uh, in education appreciate when they know, um, their central office, like I always say this, the higher you go up in or any organization, the more people you serve, not the other way around. So I appreciate that you model that by example. And, uh, John, it's awesome. Sorry about, uh, the Bruins going to lose tonight. So not I apologize for that, <laughs> but we'll, we'll find out when this is recorded. Anyways, thanks for listening. Have a wonderful day.